Kind of a crappy commute getting ready to start the day here in Troy, New York. Just had a great morning class uh, with the Dojo U um, diehards that get up with me at 7 30 every morning and work with me and uh, playing through the third part of the Sheep Wife today. Um, and it was really cool. People are making uh, really amazing progress, which is pretty exciting. Uh, we talk, you know, we talk on a regular basis about the importance of the fundamentals, um, you know, but occasionally we get into why we're really doing this. Um, and I think a lot of us get started playing the bagpipe for a variety of different reasons. Um, sometimes we want to honor um, the fallen. Sometimes we want to, you know, try an instrument with such an amazing history. If it's like me, I heard the sound of the instrument uh, when my dad played it, it was probably partially because it was my dad, but uh, I just became totally obsessed, you know, with the sound and it's just something I really had to do. Uh, and then uh, it took me a while to sort of get started, but then I really took off, right? I think we start for a wide variety of reasons, but it shouldn't take long to realize that once we get into it, it's like any other uh, mastery oriented activity, whether it's golf or basketball or whirling dervish or anything, right? Um, there's a fundamental set of skills that we want to master. Uh, painting and other like uh, traditional artistic endeavors come to mind too, right? There's a fundamental set of skills that we want to master. And once we've mastered those skills, uh, then uh, we start to break the rules uh, in order to do interesting things. And, and anyway, my bottom line would be we're, we're manifesting our intention into the real world. So uh, as Pipers, we have a vision of how it should go. And it should be our own vision. Shouldn't be the vision of anybody else. Maybe our vision agrees with somebody else, right? Maybe, you know, maybe playing in the style of someone else is what we want. But it's about manifesting our intention in the real world, right? It's about, uh, it's about taking what we want and actually being able to do it on the instrument. And that's an amazingly difficult thing to do. Uh, but that's the beauty of it. That's why we do it. And we had a great discussion about that today in class. And I thought I would share it with you guys a little bit today as well. So here we go. I'm getting my pipes out today and, uh, you know, struggling uh, to produce my, uh, you know, my desire in the real world on my instrument. And that's kind of what we do every day. And then rinse and repeat and so on and so forth. stuff here for now um, it's now gotten to that point I've done some work this morning it's now gotten to that point where if I don't leave right now I'm gonna be late for the gym so let's make that happen nice new EUS PBA web page very cool very nicely done I like that there's now scrolling news anyway the reason I was on there uh, was because my student, Dalton, upgraded to grade one. Let's see, can we get him? Dalton! Anyway, congratulations, buddy. Keep up the good work, and the good stuff will keep coming. 
Okay, uh, back to business for last time. So, uh, uh, back from the gym, things are going great. I'm feeling good today, uh, surprisingly, for a Monday. It might have to do with the three cups of coffee that I've had. Anyway, I digress. So I've been digging into some of the video footage uh, that a really awesome guy named Rusty sent me from my workshop in Atlanta. Unfortunately, I don't think I really got a good vlog for the Atlanta trip, but it was an amazing workshop with an amazing band uh, that I think other bands should aspire to be like. They really clued in, um, working hard on the things that matter, which is really cool. So we got into our usual manometer tonal production workshop, but um, it was really interesting. And anyway, this clip uh, that I found uh, just it really came out well and I want to share it with you. It's you know uh, 10 minutes or so from the workshop, but uh, Hopefully you enjoy it and that should do it for the vlog today uh, Members of the site are going to be able to get access to a huge portion of the workshop now Which is gonna be great. So thanks again Rusty for the video if you're watching this and uh, For the rest of you enjoy uh, this little piece of the workshop uh, here's what I want to do. I want you to play low A for like 15-ish seconds, get it nice and steady at the line. Then what I want you to do is I want you to switch to the note, low G, after that. The question is, you might be, you might be like, I usually do this with like kind of beginners more than semi-advanced players, so this might not work, but this is one of my party tricks. So, we're going to switch from the note a to the note low G, and I want you to see if anything happens with the monopoly. But when he did that, what happened on the imaging? <clears throat> you saw it. Oh, yeah. yeah, like, now, you're playing low A perfectly steady. Like, you're doing a really good job. Like, not perfect. But the water was right there. He was doing a really good job. Then he played the note low G, and the water went and, like, kind of took a while to even sort of get back to even remotely where he was before. That's, that's what a mental blowing, that's what mental blowing is all about. That's the easiest thing you could possibly do on the chant. Yet, it caused a fluctuation in blowing. I'll be the same, if I did it right now, I'm sure, I'm not sh I actually have, I've gotten kind of good at it over the years, but it's the same sort of thing. Okay, let's do it again. You can only take so much humility. <laughs> no, you're doing a really good job. Uh, so this time, let's go from low A. Uh, let's then go to low G. See if you can, like, it's weird though, you have to teach your brain not to care about the fact that your fingers are doing something. Then play low G for a few seconds, then go up to the note D after that. That is hard. So like, it might...
illustrate my point, right? Can you see how there's two layers of steady blind? Like, if you, you, I, sorry for making you so nervous there. It would make anybody nervous, but, um, but yeah, like, you know, it's a pretty strong physical blower there. But as soon as we do one thing with our hands, what starts to happen? Bad blind. Should I try to lead by example? Give me those. I'll try. I'm going to attempt to show you that it's possible to not change. But I might fail. I'm not sure whether I'm hoping you fail or not. Oh no. <laughs> It won't be perfect, but we should be able, I'll, I'll work my way up the scale, and we should be able to see that it's possible to, you know, change notes without drastic problems happening in the... By the way, I think I need a new bass. I'm like not able to get this thing. I just want you, I'm going to zoom in. Oh, God. <laughs> of the water that clearly had to do with something I was playing on the chanter with my fingers. Maybe the high G, if you're watching really closely. Uh, but not, not by much, uh, and that's something I work on all the time, is trying to avoid the high G moving on me. Um, and that is what mental blowing is all about. Now that is, with you, we went from low A to low G. How does that compare in difficulty to some of the technique that we play in our competition material. Do you like? Do you guys think it's kind of funny, right, to think about? I like. I, I know it's kind of masochistic, but I like knowing this stuff. I want to know. I want to know all the bad stuff that's happening because that gives me stuff I can work on. And to, you know what I mean? Like I want that data. Some people probably subconsciously know there's issues and we we try not to think about it. But to me, that's not how you approach math. Just a disclaimer, I kind of, for some reason, like this. But yeah, so, you know, there's mental blowing problems just switching from low A to low G. We have to kind of learn to teach our brains not to be affected by what's going on with the finger work as we play something. If you want to talk about playing like the top band, that's one of the single solitary differences between the average Inverary player and the average Atlanta player. Like, it's honestly not that big of a difference, but this would be one of those things. The things that are going on in the finger work, like all these complicated rhythmic things, and you know, uh, you know, people jumping around and yelling at you and all that stuff. But to actually have it not affect the overall tonal quality and solidness of your backpack, that's a big thing. Uh, so, it's just fun to do that part. <laughs> uh, so, everybody following me there? Yeah. Okay, uh, hop back on the manometers. For those with buddies, like, keep it to like 90 seconds and then switch. I know it's not ideal, but on your own time, you'll have to be able to have way too much. But like, let's do that. So, try and steady out your low A, and then start, listen, and don't go too fast. Very slowly work your way around the scale, play some different notes. 